So we've set up our jazz joystick, it's plugged in, we're ready to go. And uh, to, to get started showing you the different elements of the jazz, uh, I'm gonna wade straight in with mouse mode. So mouse mode is one of the key functions of it being a mouse. Um, obviously I've spoken about the two main functions being mouse mode and switch scanning mode. When in mouse mode and using it on a laptop like this, um, for ease of showing what I'm gonna do, you've got the big cursor here in the middle to show what how it works and I've made it green so it stands out a little bit more. Um, as I said before with the previous video, you plug it in and you're in straight away, you don't need to set anything else up. Now, the difference between the Jazz and other mouse uh, alternatives that we produce at Praetorian is that we've made this, as I've said previously, for those who really struggle with motor skills and can't hold onto the joystick or can't move it in, in a controllable manner um, and need more support in that area. So what we've done is we've restricted the um, directions to up, down, left and right but also with um, additional options of di diagonals within that. So essentially anywhere between four and anywhere of the four directions up to the eight directions. Also, you don't get any movement until you cross a threshold. So um, what I'll show you now is movement where I'm moving the joystick and the cursor isn't moving at all. Now this is if you nudge it by mistake, you don't get a movement uh, and it shows that you do need to put quite a lot of effort in to actually get it to move. When you do get it to move and it passes that threshold, you get a, you get a click sound. Hopefully you can hear that click there. But essentially every direction I try and move when centered back into the middle and I try and move again, you get that click to show that I've passed the threshold and I'm moving. Now the next thing to note is probably something that you've seen straight away in what I'm doing is as you move to a direction, um, the movement occurs and it speeds up towards a full speed. Now when you're setting your speed settings like previous um, or other models that we run, you set a speed and it's a constant speed. In this instance you set a speed such as slow up to fast and I think there's uh, and in each in each section there's four speeds. Um, but whatever speed you're on, it will start at a constant slow speed and pick up to that speed in the direction that you're following. So what we've done with that and why we've done that is uh, the speed of cursor accelerates that maximum in order to give people a bit of time to make sure that's the right direction they're in. So as you see, hold down the joystick and it moves quicker as it moves along. And you can do so with one continuous flow if you keep it outside of that threshold in the four directions required. If, you was, if I was to stop like I did there and move to centre, it slows down again and moves along. So now I'm going to talk about Smart Track. So Smart Track takes into account when the cursor hasn't been used for a while. Imagine the cursor has not been moved for a long period of time, the user has been doing something else unrelated to the, use, to the cursor, Perhaps they've been typing, perhaps they haven't been using the mouse at all for, for a long period of time. When the user resumes the cursor movement, there's a very high chance that the cursor will be in completely the wrong place to where they need it to be. Without Smart Track, the slow initial movement could be quite frustrating, as I showed you before, where it slows, uh, it slowly builds up to the full speed. Instead, Smart Track gra gradually increases the starting speed of the cursor movement until it reaches a maximum of half of the chosen maximum speed. So the cursor will then start moving half speed as soon as the stick is moved and then accelerates there to full speed. Alternatively, the other way, if the user stops moving the cursor and then immediately recommences the movement, perhaps in a different direction, it's highly likely they are homing in on something. So in this instance, rather than keeping it at half speed, it'll slow down. So Smart Track, Smart, Smart Track notices when you're trying to home in on something smaller and you've missed it or something similar. Much less frustrating for any users who are using, um, kind of, are, are trying to do that kind of thing and really can't home in on something. Honestly, this will be a preference thing and it'll be down to each user to determine whether or not this is something that they need. But I'll show you the differences now. So I've shown you it without Smart Track. I'm gonna put it into learn mode. And then to put Smart Track on, it's as simple as going through the speed settings. So the speed settings are changed by pressing the middle button again, and you get a number of beeps. 
but you get a low tone and a high tone. If you get a high tone, you're in smart track, so you you have smart track on, and the beeps are the numbers of uh, the numbers of beeps. Sorry, are the speed settings. So one to four, one being the lowest, high uh, four being the highest. As I go through, you'll hear the beeps changing. and then changing in pitch. So while I'm on low, smart track is disabled and that's the highest speed setting. Now I'm in smart track and I'll go up to the highest speed setting and then I'll come out of learn mode and I'll show you the difference in what I was saying. So immediately straight away, the cursor moves a lot quicker from the start. Half speed, moving quicker as it goes. Now I've just stopped quickly there and changed direction and it slowed right down so that it allowed me to home in on something. But if I have continuous motion, it'll be quicker. Change direction, it thinks, oh, I'm homing in. Yep, I'll slow you down. Come off it for a little while. I'll do a bit of typing, I'll come back to it. And rather than that frustrating slow speed catch up, we're straight into high speed movement. So that's smart track. Um, I'll show you now really quickly the diagonals and I'll put it back into learn mode for this. And to add the diagonals or to turn diagonals on and off, you simply hold down the left button. You get two beeps to show that diagonals are on. And you'll see I now have the full eight directions, so all four directions, as well as the four directional diagonals as well. Diagonals as well. So the final thing in mouse mode is just to simply show you the buttons and the different operations, which will be fairly straightforward. The left click button will obviously left click, so if I want to have a look at the picture in, in uh, more detail, I press left click, come back out. If I want to drag lock across a bit of text, I'll... Uh, press the middle button to come on and then that will drag across some text for me middle button to come out left button to click off and the right mouse button functions as a right mouse button but obviously within learn mode I can change that to double click if I really like would like to as well so those are the buttons and that's mouse mode that's the basics you can have a fiddle around with the different things changing the buzzer etc um, but in the next mo in the next video, I'll show you how to use switch scanning on grid and how simple it is to use this across uh, that format and software.